Thank you, Vidhi. And let's move on to the next slide. So as members of DC community, we are so fortunate to have countless examples of public servants who work towards the greater good of our city. And the KFORTS Awards program has been designed to recognize and celebrate outstanding public service, both among individuals and innovative teams. Just so you know, the program itself is a partnership between the Morris and Gwendolyn K. Fritz Foundation, the George Washington University, and the DC Department of Human Resources that helps us spread the message. Over the last 20 years of this awards program, we've been honored to recognize over a hundred extraordinary individuals and six innovative teams who played a vital role in providing outstanding service to DC residents. Why six teams? Because we started recognizing teams in the 15th year of the KFRITS Awards. It's, it was one of those innovations in recognition of the fact that there are groups of people who do incredible work in the district. And we wanted to really highlight that. Now, each of the five individual winners each year receives a $7,500 cash prize, and the winning team receives a $15,000 cash prize that gets shared equally among all the team members. Next slide, please. This is a quick uh, timeline of what the awards program looks like this year. So you may have heard um, that the nominations deadline is taking place this Friday, November 17th. And Lydia uh, will go into a little bit more detail as to what that nominations process looks like. On December 15th, we have an application deadline. Uh, there is a screening and selection process of all the candidates uh, that takes place from December to February of this year. And we are scheduled to make an announcement of who the winners are in February, 2024. For those folks who get selected as winners, we host uh, virtual meet and greets with the KFRITS Foundation, but also members of the community and anybody wants to come. And all of that gears up towards a gala, our big celebration uh, that takes place on campus of the George Washington University on April uh, the 4th. And that's our opportunity to invite uh, agency directors, leadership of DC government, as well as key representatives of the K. Fritz Foundation and George Washington University to honor our winners and finalists. Next slide, please. So there are some eligibility criteria to consider. Uh, for individuals, uh, we're looking for folks who are full-time employees of DC government and those who already have had five years of experience working with the district by the time of the submission of the application. Um, and um, eligible individuals would not serve in any of the following capacities at the time of the application, cabinet, cabinet level appointee, department deputy, teacher, or principal. Uh, I can explain those reasons in the Q&A and if you're interested as to why. Next, next slide, thank you. So for teams, um, we're looking for groups uh, work units composed of three to 10 individuals within one or multiple DC government agencies. These could involve organizations other than DC government agencies, including private sector, community-based organizations. Um, however, it's important that the initiative is sponsored um, or uh, in some way touches and involves DC government organization. Former KFRITS Awards finalists and winners are eligible for the team award, so they can be part of the nominated 
of the nominated or applying team. Uh, and uh, we get questions like, what, what can the in team initiative look like? Uh, the answer is it can be large in scale and impact the entire district or agency, or it can be small uh, scale and focused on solving a specific problem in the district. Um, the selection criteria are very important, and we want to spend time on this because this is how the application portfolios get evaluated. So for individuals, um, you can meet one or more of the criteria. It's not important, necessarily important to meet all five, as long as you meet, meet at least one of them. And here's what they are. Performed an outstanding act, which brought positive recognition to the district. Successfully initiated and implemented an innovative idea, solved an extraordinary problem or achieved a significantly difficult goal, consistently achieved excellence in overall job performance. And here's the caveat that goes above and beyond the call of duty. So above what is just written in your job description. And finally, demonstrated an outstanding and inspirational leadership that dramatically improved employee morale and team spirit. Next slide, please. The team selection criteria covers the following. So uh, we're looking for teams that introduced an unique concept, idea, or policy, or a new approach to a problem in the context of a given agency mission. An, an innovative idea that build government capacity to serve its constituents using innovative methods, tools, and techniques. Encouraged partnerships between the public sector, civil society, and private sector. Improved access and promoted equity to extending service delivery to vulnerable populations. And provided high quality service delivery through improvements in timeliness, basically efficiency and effectiveness. Next slide, please. And here, let me turn the floor over to my colleague, Lydia. Okay, so we're going to go into the nominations and application systems. Um, so just as another reminder, nominations deadline is fast approaching. It is this Friday, December 17th. Um, for clarification, a nomination is not an automatic qualification to be a recipient of the award. One must submit an application portfolio in order to be considered. So in order to nominate, you will go to www.kfitsawards.org, and I believe Katerina will help us put that into the chat. Um, and then you will be met with this home screen where you will click on submit a nomination. And that in turn will bring you to this page. So for the first thing that to notice is that there are two categories, as we've mentioned earlier, the team award and individual award, depending on who you're awarding. Um, for the individual award, the contact information um, of the nominee and the nominator is required and a hundred words or less reason why you're nominating this person or this team. Um, and it's only a hundred words or less because this is not a recommendation letter. It's just a little reason as to why you think this person would be a good recipient of the award. Um, for the team award, you only need to put the contact information of the team lead and we'll get into more of this um, for the applications. So in terms of application, you'll visit our website, www.kfritzawards.app, and Katerina will help us put that into the chat as well. Um, please note you do need to, re you are required to create an account for the application portfolio. Um, and even though you have applied, if you may have applied in the past or for a prior season, you still have to create a new account because the website is restarted every year. The um and once you create this information, you'll be met with this home page on the right. And so on the right, you are able to begin an application, either or an individual or a team application. If you are applying for a team application, you are supposed to you are to be the team lead, um, that will create an application on behalf of the entire team. 
you're welcome to edit your information. If you want to change your email or your password or whatever, um, you just go to this box on the right side of the rights page um, and click whatever it is you want to update, press update the blue button, and then it automatically will refresh the next time you want to log in. So looking into the specific application portfolio, what's required, what's not required. The first page is the applicant information. For ind individuals, this is your information. And for the team, this is the team leads contact information. Um, the first thing to note is the eligibility criteria that is on the left side of the screens, left, left side of both screens, where you need to acknowledge that you do fulfill all of the eligibility criteria. Um, so the professional information it will ask are things like your name, your agency, your title, um, email and phone number are key for the individuals. It may also ask for your supervisor. It will also ask for your supervisor's information. It is also important to put a job description, which you can get from HR department or a resume or CV that explains your scope of work. Next will be, so for the team, um, Further, for the team application, you would need to put the contact information, so email and phone number, as well as role and title and organization that they come from for all team members. Um, and then you also need to put the contribution or the roles that they play towards the initiative on the right screen, on the right side of the screen. You'll need to put, it's about 200 words, so nothing too in-depth because we'll also get into the essay part, but just to show what each individual, what role each individual played in the overarching initiative or project. We recommend, so the next part of the application is the essay and the list of accomplishments. We recommend that you store this on a Word doc um, and then copy and paste it into the application system just to be sure of any grammar and such and such. Um, so the essay is about 825 words for an individual and under 1,000 words for the team. So over here, the emphasis is on quality and not quantity. Um, it's best that you state in your essay, you state your accomplishments concisely and clearly. Um, so we recommend that you start with what the problem or problems were, what the solution or solutions were, the role that you actively played in said solution, as well as what the overall impact and outcome was from the solution and your role and the role that you played into this. And then we move on to the recommenders, um, which is the final requirement of the application portfolio. You need a require you need a minimum of two recommenders and a maximum of three recommenders who are able to speak to the impact of your work. Um, and they're able to highlight how you have benefited either the organization, the agency, the office, and or the greater DC community. These can be anyone, but please note that recommenders will not receive an information to submit um, a recommendation letter until after the application has been finished and completed and sent in. So you're more than welcome to remind them ahead of time, like, hey, just by the way, I listed you as a recommender um, to have their, so they can prepare ahead of time, but they will not be able to physically submit a recommendation letter until your application has been finalized. So just to go over the general, um, just to go over it more generally. So for an individual application portfolio, what you'll need is again, your professional information, your contact information, resume and a CV, um, your current job description that you can get from your HR office um, and a description or let's say of your accomplishments, approximately 125 words. This is the max words you do not have to, you don't have to reach up to hundred words. It can be 500 and still just as effective. And then two to three letters of recommendation. Um, this is optional, but you're welcome to add additional materials or files, such as photos, reports, videos, websites that you think will speak to the strengths of what your accomplishments are, um, and they will speak to your capacity to become a KFITS winner. Um, and Cheryl Robertson, who was once a KFITS award winner, recommends setting aside time aside to really focus on your application, not waiting to the deadline, and going through everything bit by bit. Um, to ensure that you know your grammar is correct, your spelling and such are correct. For the team application portfolio, what you will need is your team applicants, all the team's information, um, contact information, the roles and contributions they had to the project or initiative, a description of the team's accomplishments, an essay less than a thousand words, um, and also two to three letters of recommendation. Um, again, optional is photos, articles, reports, screenshots, ETC, video sites, 
um, that speak to your accomplishments or it will support your strength and capacity in becoming a KFITS Award team winner. Um, again, just to stress the point that only one application portfolio per team is required, and this will be filled out by the team lead. Um, and individual team members do not need to submit individual application portfolios. And that brings us to the end of the technical aspect of nominations and applications. Um, and so we're opening up the space for Q&As. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to unmute yourself, unmute yourself, raise a hand, ask a question, or you can pop it in the chat and we'll respond um, via chat or via speaking. And we have some great questions that already came up uh, in the chat. Um, let's start addressing those uh, first. Uh, so Shantia asks, can we do both one for our team and one for individual on our team? Um, if I understood the question correctly, and it's a great question, thank you. Uh, you can nominate both individuals and teams, and you can submit multiple nominations for either individuals and teams or both. And uh, the critical piece here is that teams and individuals need to submit the application portfolio for themselves. And um, the team lead cannot be the same person as the individual applicant. So this is our application system will red flag it if uh, one and the same individual submits both an individual uh, portfolio and a team portfolio. However, if it's a different person who is a team lead, that's fine. Um, an applicant for an individual award can be a part of the team that applies for the award as well. But just to make sure I understand what you just said, thank you. For example, I, I was the one who asked the question. If I want to nominate an individual on my team, I can do that. Can I also nominate my team as well? Yes. The answer is yes. yes. Thanks. Of course. Lydia, do you want to tackle the next question? Yes. Um. So the next question is, what advice do you have are your job description? Many job descriptions for DC government are very vague and used for a wide variety of positions within the agency. Should we use that or better to list out the things that we actually do? Um, and so I would say to this, yes, you can use that. The point of the job description is to give the screeners and selection panel members an idea of what it is that you do at said agency. But all the things that you do specifics will be in the accomplishments and in the essay session of the application letter. So if you feel your job, your job description shouldn't speak for your accomplishments, that's something that you can tackle when you're writing the essay. Um, so yes, you can still go ahead to go ahead, Karina. If I can add to that, you can, it's important that you provide a job description that has been issued by your HR department, but you can add um, an explanation in your essay that shows how you go above and beyond that job description. And in fact, that's one of the selection criteria. Sorry, Lydia, I interrupted. Oh, that's right. That's okay. That's that's great. I was, yeah, <laughs> um, you summed that up nicely. Okay. The next question is, what if everyone else on a team qualifies but one team member who has less than five years, can we still apply? Karina, do you want to take that? The answer is yes. The five-year requirement only applies to individuals, not team members. The next question is by Shantia. Is there a recommendation of whom the recommend recommenders may come from, e.g. supervisor, government employee, or can it be anyone? So it can absolutely be anyone. Um, it should, it should, we just recommend that it's someone that they can speak, speak to the impact of your work um, and, you know, the specific benefits that you've had, that you've made in your role or your position in the initiative and the project, um, how it's benefited either or either and the DC greater community or um, the organization or agency that you work from. So it doesn't matter who it comes from, as long as they can speak to um, to your specific skills, to your specific, um, um, to your progress and to your overall accomplishments. 
If I can add to that, it doesn't really matter how high of a position your recommender holds. It's important that they really know you and can speak to what you've done. Um, Katarina, you might want to answer this. The next question is how many individual applications do you typically receive? Do we it typically varies. Receive? It varies from year to year. Um, I would say between um, 65 and 100 uh, is our typical rate of applications. So it is quite a competitive process. Yeah. Next question. The, so the recommendations are forms to be filled out after submission or actual letters. The recommendations are actual letters saved in PDF or Word document. Um, but when once you submit your application, the recommenders receive a link to upload a file. So this will be where they upload the recommendation letter. So it is a letter. It's not a form. Um, they're just sent the link after submission to, to, to upload to upload the actual letters. The next question, if I nominate someone, would I complete an application package on their behalf or are they notified to complete the individual application? Um, so no, <laughs> um, so well, yes, so no and yes. So if you nominate someone, you do not complete an application on their behalf, but yes, they are notified to complete the application by themselves. So as soon as you submit the nomination through the site, they receive an email saying, congratulations, you've been nominated. Um, you can go to the website and fill out an application, um, but each team, each individual, everyone who's applying has to submit their own application. You cannot do it on behalf of someone else. Next question, time frame. And also if I'm, Asking your questions or not, um, feel free to continue to comment in the chat. Um, so next question for Katarina, time frame for accomplishment. Is it only in the prior year over multiple years? So what's the time frame for the accomplishments that you should state in the essay portion? So I would say this, it's less important to focus on time frame and more important to focus on the selection criteria themselves. Uh, think about examples of your work that address it more, more directly and where you can give ample evidence to that. Um, one of the selection criteria in the individual category says consistently achieved. So if that's something you want to tackle in your essay and focus on, think about accomplishments that you've achieved consistently over a spread out time period. Uh, you can focus on recent accomplishments. You can focus on um, accomplishments throughout your career in DC government. But the most important thing is focus on the selection criteria and how well you can address that. Next question. If completing an application for a team, do you need to include the entire team's job descriptions? So the short answer is no. What's more, um, there isn't an opportunity to put there to upload any job descriptions for the team application. What's important is the contributions on the roles, which is less than 200 words of what each member contributed to the overall initiative, overarching goal of the project of the initiative. Um, so you don't need to complete job descriptions for each of the team members because um, that's tedious, um, but it's more focused on what the initiative was and what the roles of the specific individuals contributed to that um, to that initiative. Um, next question, how many team applications do you receive annually? Katarina? Again, it varies. So uh, it can range from, when we first started the award, it was probably, 25 and it has gone up uh, from there year on year because um, the Team Innovation Award has received uh, more awareness and recognition in the district. We'll see what um, the competitiveness of the process looks like this year. Uh, I would say we have about 15 in the pipeline already. So I predict it will be um, you know, anywhere from 40 to 50 at the very least. Next question, and Karen, I don't know if you want to take this as well, but do you recommend keeping resumes short and sweet, like one page or USA job style with like five to 10 pages? 
uh, I would say short and sweet. Uh, the you will have a chance to elaborate in the essay, and there's also a supplementary material section where you can upload examples uh, that really expand on on your work. Focus on DC government work versus your entire work history. Yeah. Um, and just emphasis again, there is the space for additional files and the essay writing to build upon the resumes, the job descriptions, they're just to give the um the selectors and screeners an idea of what your role is in DC government. Um, and again, just emphasizing on quality versus quantity, um, as long as it's straight to the point, what the problem, the solution, your role, the impact, um, and that's really all that is required. So the next question is, if you're nominating your team, do you need to complete the nomination form or do you just submit an application? So if you are self-nominating, um, whether yourself or a team, you can just go straight to the application. The nominations are to give us an idea of who to reach out to. Um, but if you know that you've done good work with your team or as an individual, you can go straight to the application. There's no need to fulfill to fill out the nomination form. Next question. So further clarification. So the individual that is nominated for the individual award, the nominee must complete the app and the team lead has to complete the app for the team award. Yes. The nominee completes the individual award for themselves and the team lead completes the application, the team applications for the team. That is correct. Um, and the next question is, what is the maximum number of team members more than 10? No. So the maximum is 10 members. So a minimum of three and a maximum of 10. Um, so you can be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but you cannot be more than ten, and you cannot be less than three. So those Fantastic. are all the questions in the chat. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's some more coming up. Um, so during the screening process, are there any interviews or time to elaborate? Katarina, do you want to take this? There are no interviews. Um, what happens is that our um, screening committee looks at all the portfolios. Uh, there are two screening committees assigned to each portfolio. Uh, and the goal of that process is to um, really narrow down the field to the top 20 finalists for the individual category and 10 finalists for the team category. And then the selection panel meets uh, together to review each of the finalist portfolios and make a final decision on the five individual winners and the one team winner. There are no interviews involved. Um, and I just resubmitted for some of us who have may come after the links to nominate and the links to create an application and start your application portfolio. And uh, I, I see we are at time. Um, uh, we are happy to stay and answer any more questions that you have. We'll also put our contact information into the chat. So if you think, oh, and we have it on the slide there as well. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, anything else comes to mind, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are at your service. We're happy to answer any any technical questions, any big picture questions about eligibility, we are here for you. And our next in for session, if you have anyone to you want to invite is December 6th, which is also Wednesday at 1230 to 1 p.m. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. And I see a former K Fritz Awards winner joined us.